Hey y'all, here on the bench today is my Superstar T747 microphone test set. And I bought this thing probably four or five years ago. Could be even a little longer, I'm not really sure. And it's never performed like it should. Um, you put a mic in it, it's scratchy, it doesn't sound good. And another problem that it does is that when you turn this thing on, every receiver in the shop including the ham radios up front go crazy this thing is like a wideband noise generator and I stuck it over in the corner and haven't really messed with it since well I saw a, a video that Peter did and he happened to have one of these exactly like it and he had did a mod to his and had an accessory panel to plug in different ham radio microphones so I would kind of like to be able to do that with mine if I can figure out what is causing <laughs> all the trouble that this one is doing and we'll look at it on the spectrum analyzer and we'll crack it open and go inside of it now you can see I have a old CV radio sitting up here that I use for a bench radio Now you can hear the volume go up and down. But as you can see, I have just a, uh, a coupling wire, a sniffer, laying on top of it, and it is connected to the spectrum analyzer. And you can see all those spikes and singles on the spectrum analyzer. And I've got it tuned right now to 31.5 megahertz. But I've got the uh, the band kind of narrowed so you can see a lot of it. And if I turn it off, you can see all of them go away. When I unplug it, you can see this other spike here go down. But just plugging it back in to the piece of equipment, you can see that spike come way up and then turn it back on and you can see it come up now and all this is is the RF loop is just laying on top of it even though it's a metal case you can see these singles are getting out of this box so I got the thing cracked open and what I'm going to do is just take the uh, the probe and just go around it and I'll let you see what you see on the uh, spectrum analyzer but you got to remember all this thing is is just a uh, it has a, a DC input and there's an audio amplifier in it and I've never took it apart because you have to unsort all these connectors to even get the thing off so I guess I'm gonna have to do that uh, this thing comes in real handy because it has uh, some audio inputs and for testing some things it's, it's pretty neat but now with the single generator I'll be using that more you know but still when testing certain things this is always good especially microphones so we'll focus our attention back on the spectrum analyzer again And you can see what happens when I move the probe around the inside. So I get the biggest spike. when the probe is near this area up here so I guess what I'm gonna do is uh, pull this board out and check around and see if there's something has gone bad on it or, or just what it is but this thing has become a noise an RF noise generator and uh, 
it took me a while to figure out where this was coming from and when Peter did his video I didn't remember it because I haven't used this thing since well after pulling it apart I had to desort all these connectors um, just you know just to get the board out and remove the nut from the potentiometer but as you see we really don't have a whole lot in this thing we have a 7809 voltage regulator there's a capacitor on it, a couple, you know, four electrolytics, um, two LEDs, a few resistors. Uh, no diodes, a little ceramic cap here, and a little micro cap over here. So there's not a whole lot to this thing. But uh, I think this uh, amplifier is like a two watt. Um, it's a TBA 820M. Maybe it's 1.2 watt. I'll have to pull the data sheet. But I do see something very interesting here. So here's a little bit better shot of the uh, audio amplifier. And if you look right here beside it, you see this crusty stuff that's on the circuit board. And right there over top of it is a 100 UF at 25 volt capacitor. And you can see the bottom is uh, hanging out of it. So perhaps this is what's causing this thing to become a noise generator instead of an audio amplifier. I'll remove the 100 UF capacitor and you can see the whole end is uh, blowed completely out of it and testing it it says damaged or unknown part so perhaps this is what's caused all that noise and what is that uh, Jake, J-A-K-E-C, J-Cat, and it's even more to 105C, uh, if you believe that, stand on your head, never heard of this brand. So just looking at this uh, audio amplifier that's in here, um, you see it's in 8 pin TBA 820M and you can see pin 1 is frequency compensation pin 2 is gain setting pin 3 is input pin 4 is ground pin 8 is a ripple rejection pin 7 is bootstrap pin 6 is supply voltage and pin 5 is the output now this little amplifier will work from like 3 to 16 volts and it starts off at like 1.2 watts out and the higher in voltage you go the more you know wattage it'll put out up to about 2 watts and just if you're interested there's a shot of the uh, internal workings of the uh, little amplifier I might leave a link down below to uh, the data sheet if anybody wants to take a look at it okay well I got those capacitors replaced on him replaced all of them and uh, just so if Peter ever has to go into his what you have to do is uh, desort all of these uh, mic jacks now the two middle ones are they used wire from the board up to the pin but on the other ones they just sorted the pin just does touch the board and they you know bridge it with solder on all of it so I guess now the moment of truth 
we'll uh, put the case on it and turn it on and see what it does okay I'm going to uh, turn my receiver back up and switch the power on we have nothing There we go. Wasn't plugged in good. And the receiver is completely deaf. Not hearing anything. Now I will have noticed that this green light looks like it's about as twice as bright as it's ever been. And we'll check this out now and see. Test one two. Test one two. Well I can say it does sound a lot better. And I'm not hearing anything in the radio. So let's take a look at the spectrum analyzer and see if there's anything picking up. Well, as you can see, it's uh, just a regular noise floor. And I'm moving the probe all around it and not picking up any singles. So there we have it. The uh, little mic tester is back working like it should. We'll kind of build a uh, little console like Peter made for his to plug in different uh, ham radio uh, microphones. So you know, make it a lot easier to test those and work on it. It was a good idea, Peter, by the way. And I can now put this on the shelf and use it again. You know, I said that uh, before, if anybody wants to learn radio RF electronics, you know, a good platform to start on is with uh, old CB radios. Like, this is one I picked up at a flea market for five bucks. And the radio is completely intact. I didn't open it up and looked inside of it because, you know, my thought was there's a lot of parts in here. And I figure for five bucks, it's probably not even worth working on. But, and as Mike would call them, it's one of the black box radios. It probably puts out as much single as the uh, microphone tester was uh, putting out. But anyway, uh, you know, being that it's intact, I might just fix it and just see if we can figure out one with it if anybody's interested in doing a video on this on troubleshooting this let me know down below and you know always your comments are always appreciated but like i say good platform to, you know to learn from anyway uh, i'll leave a link down below to the website with contact information and i'll also leave a link to the form if anybody wants to go over and discuss anything i'm getting more and more new members on the forum lately so that's always a good thing anyway we'll catch you in the next video and hopefully we'll be back on the ft 101 series you know it's just been real busy here in the shop trying to get caught up on other stuff and you know being away where the storm was gone but we're slowly getting back into it anyway we'll catch you later